Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And yes, it's finally time to upgrade my personal PC. But before we get on with any of that, first of all, let me apologize about the state of my voice. Unfortunately, some things in life can't be avoided. So today we are going to briefly take a look at the selection of components, briefly unbox them, and hopefully put it all together on a test bench and start to evaluate just how bloody quick these Zen 4 CPUs really are. Transition. Let's quickly take a look at the components, starting with the motherboard. And what a motherboard. Now this piece retails for over 700 pounds in the UK. It's criminally expensive. At the same time, it is what you call future-proof. It has three PCI Gen 5.0 ports. There's about six M.2 slots um, some of them are actually Gen 5 as well, so I guess in the future I can upgrade to even faster storage. The aesthetics really work for me, so I'm happy on those bases. And it really is, you know, a proper high-end board. So let's take a quick look at what you get for your £700. And spoiler alert, I've looked at it before, so it's out of this ESD bag already. But... As motherboards go, this is literally the motherboard. Very subtle, gold and black theme. I mean, what's not to like here, right? It is a chonker of a board, I'll tell you that. Nearly 2.3 kgs. That is what I call heavy. Obviously, a full metal backplate. Don't think this is going to help with the cooling, but hey, that's what I've got for the motherboard. Now, it is bundled with some cool stuff so it's got its own dedicated PCI expansion slot for two SSDs SATA cables the Wi-Fi antenna and the module some RGB cables some SSD standoff screws you know the typical stuff you get with motherboard and there's a USB stick cool so that covers the motherboard genuinely the number one reason which is stopping the AM5 adoption is the motherboard pricing. So if these are to come down in price, I'm pretty sure more people will be happy to move on to the AM5. Right. And of course, at the heart of it, the 17950X3D. So I've had a debate with myself, as often that's what you do, um, between the 7900X3D and 7950X3D. I think there was a YouTube outlet that covered this briefly, talking about the 7900 being faster. However, you know, for my workloads, I do edit these videos. Um, I do play games. So I thought, you know what? Again, the logic of, I only upgrade my PC every five years or so. Let's just get the best there is. 16 cores, 32 threads should be absolutely monstrous. And obviously, I'm not upgrading to 4000 series, so every FPS I can get out of my 3080 Ti is good, you know, driving a 4K monitor. Storage-wise, so um, for the main drive for the OS, I went with the 990 Pro from Samsung. These are proven to be, you know, quite robust SSDs. I always use them. I've got them, you know, 860, 970, and so on and so on. That's two terabytes, so I've got two of these. Um, I know it's only Gen 4, technically I should have gotten a Gen 5 SSD, but with read and write speeds of about 5 gigabytes per second, who really needs anything more? For the memory, so again, big debate with myself, but ended up getting a 2 kits 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6000 mega transfers. So this should be CL30, it is AMD XO certified, I don't know much about RAM overclocking. I've done very little of it, but I think hardware unboxed called 6,000 mega transfers as the sweet spot. And lastly, so looking after the temperatures is gonna be this Corsair H170i Elite with an LCD. I know, I'm not really um, keen on the RGB, but I do appreciate that, you know, 2.1 inch screen. And let me be clear, if I've had a cat that looked this cool, this would be on there 24-7. It's a 420 all-in-one closed liquid cooler. 
should be perfectly fine for the um, you know 7950X3D. So the next step for me is stop blurbing, get the test bench out and assemble this PC together so we can start benchmarking. And some considerable time later, the bench is together. The last piece of work that needs doing is just slapping this um, RTX 3080 on this bench. Flick the power switch. This moment marks the first boot of my new 7950 X3D. Let's go. Here we go. We've got a post of the memories recognized, just sitting there idle. Okay, one thing to mention, look at the aesthetics of this motherboard. I mean, you know, I keep saying it, I don't care about the looks, I care about the performance, but this is really, really good looking board. I'm gonna have to configure those LEDs, but I'm liking it so far. But before we get too emotional, I need to now install an OS, all of the tools, and get cracking with the benchmarks. So, until then, see you later. Okay, I'm back with a fresh install of Windows and all of the necessary updates in place. But before we start, let's quickly touch on a couple of the things. In order not to blow my precious CPU, MSI have capped the SoC voltage to 1.3 volts in the latest BIOS, but I still lowered it further to 1.25 volts just to play it safe. The main benefit of the X3D chip is utilizing the CCD with the stacked cache. So today's testing was done with both auto and cache options selected in BIOS. And you know it's a good day when you need to adjust range in all your graphs. Anyway, this is what 16 Zen 4 cores do in Cinebench R23. The multi-thread score of 34,000 points is of course the most I've ever recorded, that's a crazy 92% increase over my existing Ryzen 9 3900X. The single thread score of 1927 is about 50% faster over my 1300X and around 28% faster than the recently tested Ryzen 5 5600. There was about 5% difference between using auto and cache mode with the single thread score. The multi-threaded score is the same or well within the margin of error. Compression and decompression test results in 7-zip show monstrous 82% gains thanks to that 6000 MHz DDR5 memory. Scores between auto and cache settings are really again within the margin of an error. Next, I'm using Blender 3.4 to render the BMW car demo. The 7950X3D took just 1 minute and 6 seconds to complete, making it almost 90% faster over the 3900X. That's crazy. What are your thoughts so far? Once again, there is not much of a difference between using auto and cache mode. Finally, using the handbrake to process a 10 GB 4K video file by using the fast 1080p 30 preset. The 7950X3D managed to squeeze under 5 minute mark and was about 82% faster than my 12 core 3900X. With productivity benchmarks over, what are your thoughts? I think the results are very impressive and I'm looking forward to utilizing those gains in my production workloads. But you don't buy the X3D unless you also plan on gaming. So let's move on to that. All game benchmarks are run at 1080p and by using a powerful GPU, I'm trying to highlight CPU bottlenecks. My RTX 3080 is still fine for the majority of CPUs I'm going to be testing in the near future. However, with the 7950X3D, it might just be the bottleneck itself. I've capped footage from both auto and cache settings again, so let's see if and how much does it actually help. First, we take a look at F1 2018 with ultra high settings and running a Japan circuit. Hardware info indicated a CPU package pulling around 80 watts, which is just insane for a 16 core processor. The RTX 3080 was pushed hard and nearly by its limit, 
pulling in excess of 360 watts at times. 7950X3D pushed average FPS to way above anything I've tested prior, but interestingly, it was the auto setting that resulted in the highest 375 FPS on average, with 1% lows and 181. That's still nearly 37% faster than the now second fastest Ryzen 5 5600. Mind you, it's one seventh of a price, so yeah. Second game tested was Dirt Rally with ultra settings and 2 times MSAA enabled. The CPU package power dropped even further to around 65 watts, but the cache mode really kicked in. This huge gain took the average FPS from 280 to 365, that's a 30% increase. Remember how impressed I was with the Ryzen 5 5600 in the latest video? Well, it's nearly 70% slower than this monster of a CPU. Third game tested was Deus Ex Mankind, with very high settings dialed in. The results are within a margin of error, and there is no benefit of the V cache to be seen here. 196 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 135, is still of course the fastest I've ever recorded, and about 26% faster than the 5600. Forza Horizon 4 next, using Ultra Preset. The lower core clocks suggest the cache mode works in this title, but this only reflected in a 3% increase to average FPS and 6% improvement to the 1% lows. Still, that's a healthy 25% faster over the Ryzen 5 5600. Pressing on, and it's the turn of Lara Croft in the shadow of the Tomb Raider. As always, higher settings with no DLSS was used. And once again, I saw nearly identical results between the auto and cache modes, with the average FPS of 224 and 1% low sitting around 158. Compared to Ryzen 5 5600, the 7950X3D only managed to be 14% faster. I'm almost certain we are GPU bound here. Rainbow Six next. This game puts any CPU to good use and loves CPU threats, so of course, the 7950X3D feels like at home. Once again, no noticeable performance difference between using auto and cache modes, but the average FPS, man, it's over 500. Compared to the second best, the 10900X, it's slower just by 17%. That is not very impressive, can someone kindly send their RTX 4090 over? Next game tested was Far Cry 6, using ultra settings. The cache mode worked here as intended, and the average FPS went from 145 to 155, an improvement of about 7% to the average FPS and about 9% for the 1% lows. Compared to the Ryzen 5 5600, it's around 30% faster. Not bad at all. Coming up to the last game I tested, Cyberpunk 2077 with high preset and no DLSS. Sadly, this game saw no benefit of the cache mode, and results are nearly identical. Looking at the averages, you can clearly see the 7950X3D is held back and performs only about 3% faster over the 10900X, at least when using an RTX 3080. This will obviously only get worse as you increase resolution. Alright then, there you have it. The 7950X3D ran through my usual testing. What do you think of the performance it delivered in both games and productivity? Please, let me know in the comments down below. My initial thoughts are, I'm seriously impressed by just how fast and efficient it is. This processor is a freaking spaceship, and I cannot wait to install it into my personal PC. I will be making a separate video and capturing the real-world scenarios of playing games on my 4K monitor with a 3080 Ti. Let's see how much of an upgrade this whole purchase was. As you've seen in the benchmarks, the cache mode does not always work, but I'm also aware this might be less of a problem with more powerful GPU and of course future window updates. Although this upgrade was stupidly expensive, I'm happy with my purchase. Please note, in the interest of time and releasing of this video, the results of today's testing are pretty much as close to out of the box as possible, so call me lazy and your mileage may vary. 
I am looking forward to spending more time fine tuning and adjusting the CPU to squeeze even more performance out of it, just in time for the release of Starfield. And if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.